the electric circus. Insert coin. Thank you. Press start. That's right, the electric circus. The totally geek-tastic podcast devoted to news, reviews, rants, and raves. All your favorite stuff, games, gear, cons, cosplay, and more. And here's the ringmasters for today's circus, Ray Gun and UberNerd527. So let's go down to the center ring. The show's about to begin. Welcome uh, to Electric Circus Live. Uh, the Electric Circus is our podcast where we talk about all things nerd-related. Um, we talk about TV shows, movies, video games, and more. Hello, Cinnamon Tunes. Welcome to the show. So we're recording a live podcast today, um, and our topic is going to be uh, our favorite uh, TV shows, video games, movies, uh, etc. of 2020. Um, but before we begin, uh, I want to welcome you guys here. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, we are part of the arcade archives, uh, dot com. So go to the arcade archives dot com for more, uh, podcasts, articles and stuff, uh, for all kinds of pop culture related stuff, uh, mainly video games, but we also talk about movies and shows and, um, we also throw a couple of nostalgia reviews and stuff like that. So hello, Dan, Denamite139. Hello. Welcome to the show. Um, so we're going to be recording this podcast. It's going to be a little off the cuff. So with that, folks, I think it's time that we go ahead and get started. What do you think, Mr. Uh, Mr. Danny? Oh, I think so. I think we're pretty good. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, just one thing, though. I just need to sneak a peek at the, the that list I, that I sent you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, yeah, I've, got, I've got mine here, and uh, I've got yours. Now, some of ours... Oh, okay, all right, yeah. All right, then no need to worry. Some of our some of our games uh, and some of our our subjects cross. Um, yeah. So and then there's a few things we've already talked about in previous podcasts. Um, yeah. So we're just gonna skim the surface, yeah. uh, and then uh, move on to our next topics. Okay, so here we go. Let's go. Uh, um, by the way, while we are talking, we would love you guys in the chat uh, to also join in. So if you have any favorite shows, because uh, we're about to, we're going to go back about shows first. So if you have a favorite show of 2020, go ahead and put it in the comments, and we will read them right here on the Instagrams. All right. So uh, let's start off with uh, favorite shows of 2020. Danny the Ultrasonic Player. Um, let's start off, I guess, because my my mine mine's first on the list here. So. Uh, we both have this number one on our list, um, but we did a two-hour podcast talking about it, um, <laughs> so uh, I don't think we need to go over it, but I'll just go ahead and mention it real quick, and that, of course, was The Mandalorian. Yep. Yes. We both loved The Mandalorian Season 2. It was a great part of 2020. Um, I, we have a whole two-hour podcast talking about why we love it and going through every single episode. So if you want to, you're more than welcome to go on our site and check it out. And uh, yeah, uh, so we'll just skim through that. But the next one, I think, is something we both can also talk about. And that, of course, is Star Wars The Clone Wars. Oh, God bless you. Star Wars The Clone Wars Season yes. 7. Now, uh, I almost forgot that this came out at the beginning of 2020, but it did. Um Really? Oh my gosh! It's yes. Just like reason. Somehow I thought that it started late last year. No, no, or, or, no. Or like at the end of last year. I don't know. No, no, no. It started right as the quarantine started. In fact, um, I did um, during that time, I was doing an article series, and I decided to do uh each episode of of the uh the series um kind of reviewing it and it was it was in 2020 like right before, uh, like most of the episodes were during the quarantine so yeah uh the last season of the clone wars i there's i can't say enough about it it was really great it was really really great especially that ending uh oh that ending <sighs> oh <Yeah>, boy <laughs> i mean we all kind of hoped that the show would come back in some fashion or at least 
uh, be able to tie things up uh, because the way they were left, there were still a lot of there were still a lot of threads that hadn't really been uh, touched on, um, and the way that it was done really, really gave a sense of not even a sense, but really were able to tell that yeah this is the period at the end of the sentence for the series as the way george and dave wanted it to be oh yeah and again the ending you you don't even have to there's no words there's no words for it because it's done that well and oh, yeah. you forget for a moment because and i think we had mentioned we had talked about this too um in an early episode that the way it's done you forget you're looking at an animated series. Yep. You you because it really has that cinematic feel, which is key to what to what Star Wars is, especially given what it's connected to during that point in time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I agree. And um, now the first couple of series, like um, were the, the Bad Batch, I thought was a great start, um, especially since it hadn't been the, the the Clone Wars hadn't been on TV in you know forever. So I thought it was a yeah. good jumping off point. Um, the people are a little divisive about the Ahsoka walkabout arc. Uh, some people like it. Some people didn't like it so much. Um, I'm more the... Eh. Yeah, I mean, it is fine. what it is. I mean, it is what it is. What it is. It's fine. Will. Yeah. Um, but that ending, bro. Oh my gosh. That ending itself. My my gosh. And then it lining up perfectly with Vengeance of the Sith. Um, and, uh, you know, even having like timestamps that fit perfectly. Um, and it just all around season seven was great. Um, a, a good, very good part of, of, uh, the, 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 the mid parts of 2020. Um, and, uh, something I definitely loved watching every time, uh, during the quarantine because, uh, Whew, yeah, we need that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was definitely, uh, again, a really good way to kind of help take our minds off, especially considering the fact, you know, what, what everyone was kind of dealing with, you know, right. having to stay home and right. things like that. Um, all right. Now, this next one, I'm going to admit, I'm going to admit, I'm slightly biased. I am slightly biased, this new, this next one on my list. Um, okay, go ahead. So... <laughs> And that is uh, a the Disney Plus original series, The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom. Um, I really love this documentary series, and not just because I work where they were filming. <laughs> did, they get a, did they get a shot of you? No, you know what? Uh, me and my girlfriend, uh, uh, who is I think is watching right now. Hello, Amy. Um, yeah, she, did, she did give a wave. So. Uh, <laughs> They were recording around us. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, I do work at Disney. Um, I work at the Animation Experience at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And uh, where they where they were shooting and um, doing the show, I actually work around that area. So we were both looking for, uh, see if maybe we made a slight little cameo in the show. But uh, unfortunately, uh, alas, it was not so. Um, but uh, it is a really good series. Um you get to see how the animals are taken care of at uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom. So if you've ever wondered oh, wow. um, what that's like and how that how that goes, yeah, it's a it's a really great series. So if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly suggest that. So those are my favorite shows of 2020. Danny, you only have one show, and that is uh, that we we don't have in common. Uh, and that's Castlevania on Netflix. Yeah, um, yeah, because um, it was during last year, and I can't remember when, but I know it was last year that basically um, that I was curious about it and decided to check it out. Um, I am not too familiar with Castlevania other than just uh, like the first game and things like that. I know that you play these uh, whip uh, whip wielding uh, vampire hunters and. You know, all the other characters that, that, um, that come from that. Um, plus, I have to admit, my first exposure to Simon Belmont was through Captain and the Game Master, which is not exactly <laughs> the most accurate not exactly. interpretation of the character at all. It is anything but that. But hey, it was, it, was the, it was the 80s. It was the first game. <laughs> it's not like nowadays where Simon Belmont would definitely be different, for sure. Hello, Purple um, Cat. Welcome to the show. Hello. 
welcome to the show. Um, again, um, as Josh uh, said before, please feel free to chime in with some of your favorite shows. Yeah, um, and we'll and we'll read them. Please, yeah, don't, let us don't be shy. Let us know what your favorite shows of 2020 were, um, and we'll we'll read your comments here in the chat. So, um, oh yeah, um, just to just to finish up. Um, yeah. So yeah, Castlevania. Um, again, I'm still stuck on season one because uh, again, I've been busy with other things, but I do intend to go back to it. I know they've done at least um, two seasons worth, and from what I've seen, just the the dynamic between the characters really kind of uh, it's really good. Plus, you really sympathize with Dracula, which is kind of. Uh, Interesting because most interpretations of Dracula, he's not really that much of a sympathetic character. Mm-hmm. But in the series, um, you know, spoilers if you haven't seen it, um, he does have a legit reason for why he ends up doing what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, to say nothing of the fact that you know, at the time, certain uh, certain members, the people responsible for taking his loved one away from him, um, let's just say that, <laughs> boy, it's it's just it's you find that in that regard, it's not that clear cut. I mean, that right. doesn't change the fact that he has to be stopped, um, which are three intrepid uh, uh, band of heroes, or misfits, I guess you could say, um, are up to the task and seem to be the only ones who can do it. And it's a good interpretation. It really shows um, how an animated interpretation of some video game characters can be. Mm-hmm. Um, because, again, up to this point, most video game adaptations or animated adaptations of these characters is not really the best. Um even though, granted, I do like the 80s, uh, the shows that they did in the 80s, you know, for what they were. I like them for what they were. But I do feel that there is that there is potential for these characters to be given a good animated uh, interpretation. And Castlevania is definitely a step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Well, by the way, thank you, Purple Cat, uh, for saying uh, uh, you saw me a few a couple years back at the comic book store uh-huh. and you still like my comic. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Blue Flame Legends my is comic, a comic. Way. Thank you. Um, and, uh, thank you very much for saying that. Uh, but yeah, I haven't, I'm not a big fan, uh, of Castlevania. I like Castlevania style games, but, uh, so I, I didn't get to check it out, but, uh, all right. Well, let's move on to movies, which by the way, (laughs) our definition of movies has changed a little. (laughs) So uh, here's what we're going to do uh, for movies because of how everything that happened last year happened. We're going to talk about either movies that were theatrically released or maybe direct to streaming movies as well. Maybe they were planned to come out in the movie theaters, maybe not. We're just going to talk about them, okay? Um, and again, chat, while you're in here, if you guys want to... Uh, to talk about your favorite movies, uh, and uh, we're, we are recording this, so this will be on our podcast uh, later on, probably next week or so. So uh, if you want to hear your, your comments here on the podcast, feel free to do so. So let's move on to movies. Um, I'm going to start off with the very last new movie <laughs> I saw in theaters in 2020, and that, of course, uh, is on both of our lists, which is, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog. I will say I was very surprised by this movie. I was not going into it. Like the only reason I wanted to see it was because of course Sonic, I'm a huge Sonic fan. I, although I was a little trepidatious about whether this movie was going to be good or not. Um not alone. a lot of people felt the same way. Yeah, but it surprised me. It legitly surprised me. I was I was thinking it was going to be bad and it was really good. Sonic was Sonic you know, I love Jim Carrey as Robotnik. It was kind of his return to form to his, like, uh, you know, his more funny persona. And I, I enjoyed his his acting and his uh, his take on Robotnik was really good. Um, I'm excited for the sequel, uh, Sonic 2, which yeah. they've already announced. So uh, what about you, uh, Mr. Danny? What did you like about Sonic the Hedgehog? I guess I was just, just kind of surprised by how fun and how, really that's what it is, how fun it was. It wasn't something that was taken super dark and serious, um, yet it didn't really It didn't really feel like, like there was nothing artificial about it. And that was, I think, because um, I know that, you know, you know, according to a lot of fan forums, that there have been attempts to try and get a sonic film off the ground, but nobody was able to get the right tone, or it just wasn't done right, or, you know, just all sorts of um, red tape and things like that. So it was an interesting thing, but 
the big thing that I was kind of uh, concerned about was what kind of tone were they going to give the character? Was it going to be just um, on Mobius, you know, with with a sad AM crew? Which to me, that's probably where I would have gone if I were if I were the one writing and directing it. But the way they did it really showed, okay, all right, I, I like where they're going with this. And to say nothing, of course, and of course that doesn't count the char- the overhaul to his character design. That was the one thing that, you know, the initial design just had me going, had me the, and I know the rest of the fan base going, what in the world is this? And uh, But then, of course, when they went back and changed it, that's when everyone breathed a sigh of relief. And I think that's when people started to get a little bit more cautiously optimistic. Um, but again, seeing the movie, seeing how they did it, and just it, it stayed true to the essence of what Sonic is. And I do like the fact that they actually had, like, they showed that, yeah, it turns out wherever he's from, um, which I'm guessing is Mobius still, if, if they... Uh, could be um, possible. It could be possible. So it's either basically in another dimension or someplace else on in the universe. And, you know, he just ended up hopping from, you know, one planet to Earth and all the crazy stuff there. But I do like, again, I like how they did it. And it really has me looking forward to the, uh, the next one. And I think another thing, too, because a lot of people seem to have this perception that everything has to be hyper real. But that's not the case at all. The funny thing about some of these characters, whether it be Sonic or Mario, they are characters that can't really have them be hyper real. And in fact, if anything, make them more cartoony. Oh, yeah, uh, the definitely. The more cartoonier they look. Definitely. Because here's, here's the kicker. The more realistic they look. The more realistic they are. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, and again, go figure. Um, it's like with, uh, with Mario. I'm more inclined to his two dimensional, you know, cartoony look. Because I know that there were two artists, specific artists at Nintendo, that gave the Mario characters that distinct look and right. I, know, I, can't, I forget their names but it's that the same thing with Sonic the more cartoony you make him the more the more close to his, how he looked in regular animation mm. the, the more the more real he is and, yeah. um, and, and I'm glad they went with that I mean good grief I mean that end credit scene that showed okay alright you got me sold yeah alright and uh, let's move on to my next one which is uh, one that's just on my list that's Onward um, oh yeah! I really liked Onward. I feel, unfortunately, because of everything that happened and the very poor timing, not on the part of anybody, anybody, <laughs> just unforeseen things um, yeah. of the movie. I just don't feel it's going to be as popular as they were hoping it was going to be. Um, I really like the story. I think for me, it's a little bit more personal because it's about brothers. Uh, and about, you know, losing your father, and I can really relate to that myself, so it kind of hit me in the feels, um, uh, you know, just the imaginative world this took place on. I think that this was a really good, uh, Pixar movie, and, uh, one of my friends said it to, I feel like it was a very non-Pixar Pixar movie, but uh, it still was a good movie. And um, I just feel like it's just it didn't get as much attention as as uh, it might have been had nothing had happened uh, that would have hampered it. But uh, I I did enjoy that movie. Um, any any anything you got for Onward? Um, well, it's definitely uh, one of the films that I do intend to watch. Um, I haven't had a chance to, um, not for lack of trying, just you know other things have come up. But just um, but just what you talked about and what the movie's about, um, it's already, it, it, I mean, that right there pretty much has my attention. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you have, you know, two MCU actors, you know, Tom Holland and Chris Pratt doing in, in the lead roles, <laughs> yes. I mean, that alone tells you that, yeah, even, even outside the, the Marvel Studios stuff, these actors have chemistry between them such that you put them in any other project and they're going to give you something really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, next one that's on both of our lists and I think, to be honest, I, if, if I could give it an award, because we haven't really given it awards, I guess Mandalorian would be my favorite of 2020, but a favorite show of 2020. But if we're giving awards, I guess, our, but at least I feel, my favorite movie of 2020 would be uh, Soul. You know what? Uh, I, I, I'm inclined to agree, um, because I, while I haven't finished the entire film, but I have gotten started on it, and I'm actually, I think, halfway through um, yeah, halfway through, and I gotta tell you, from what I've seen, from it's it's a good good story, 
and it's really one that um, it, it, it it actually for me it goes back to I think the first if not I think it was I think it was the teaser trailer that really hooked me in where um, the character kind of says you know you know don't don't waste your time on on needless things but go for the things that bring out the real you you know mm-hmm. the the, per, the creative you the passionate you you know the the things that you do that make you feel a lot and mm-hmm. that sort of thing is uh, is something that that I think we all can definitely connect with and I, I know I do yeah um and just um and just you know take the opportunities when they come for me as an artist I think that this movie is a very very unique movie um for several different reasons first of all the visual style of this movie is just tremendous and probably in my opinion the best looking pixar movie i've seen um and there's some good looking pixar movies um but the fact that they have almost photorealistic looking landscapes with caricature type characters but it doesn't it doesn't mess with the look of the film like it does it's not jarring it's not it just feels like it all fits perfectly um i love it i think it's great um and there's other characters and again minor spoilers not anything too big but slight minor spoilers there are these characters that are two-dimensional but at the same time, they're three-dimensional. And it's so cool. It's so weird, but cool. Yeah, and that's that's a very tricky thing to do. Because oh, yeah. Because usually you can't really blend 2D. It's very difficult to just blend in 2D stuff and 3D stuff together without making it feel like it's like being... without having it look weird. Mm-hmm. And uh, from what I've seen, it just, it's just... Everything feels natural. Yeah. It flow the, the animation flows naturally, mm-hmm. and and I don't, ugh, I, I don't know how they do it, but again, it's Pixar. Yeah, they, they, I, they just know their stuff. It's it's a really great movie. I think my for me the only downside for this movie is that I just don't think it's gonna hit the kid audience as much as like uh, Inside Out or Toy Story or something like that. Um, I feel like the theme of the movie is. A very heavy subject for a kid to understand. And, um, I don't think that's, you know, because kids can watch a movie and, and not, I, I feel like kids are really smart. They can get things, they can pick up on things really yeah. quickly. But there are some subjects that are pretty heavy. And, you know, even as a kid, you don't fully understand what that means. Now, there's some really cool visuals and stuff that they can see. Um, but I just don't know. Uh, of course, then again, and I've said this time and time again really our first reaction to a movie is not is not the final judgment on whether a movie is a classic it's time time really makes a movie a classic and uh we'll we'll see what happens when uh, when soul is two three four maybe five years old and maybe maybe it's a different tune uh but uh pun intended um (laughs) Uh, but uh, as for last year, I think it's probably my movie of the year, man. Um, really great, great movie. All right, let's move on to my next one. And uh, this may may be a little divisive. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Um, I saw it. I don't know if you've seen it yet, Danny. But uh, that's Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah, I haven't really gotten around to seeing it. It's fine. Um, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> It's fine. But yeah, go ahead. It's not divisive, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I like the movie. Okay? I liked it. I thought it was alright. Um, was it better than the first one? Mm, not really. However, it was a fun movie. It had a lot of fun characters. And Pedro Pascal as the villain. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> he was yeah. the best part of this movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he... That's the thing about Pedro. That, it's a testament to Pedro Pascal to where you he can play both the protagonist and the antagonist very well, and mm-hmm. it doesn't feel forced. So, unintended. It it, it um, looked really weird with him. He didn't have his mustache, so he looked he looked really yeah, weird. But uh, <laughs> actually, you know, here's the thing: not to get off topic, but there's a clip of him on YouTube um, when he was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
Uh, he was on Buffy? I didn't know that. He was. Uh, oh, that's completely awesome. Completely clean-shaven, but you'll know by the voice. Oh, nice. Yeah, his voice is hard, is hard to miss. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, I liked it. My my only gripe with it is that it 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 suffers from the Spider-Man 3 syndrome, and that is just way too much going on. Way, way too much going on. If they would have focused on one, maybe, maybe one thing, I think it would have been a much better movie. But because they, were just, they just throw so much at you, I, I feel like it kind of dragged the movie down a little bit. But not so much that I hated the movie. Like, like I, after the movie I was done, I was like, well, this could have been tweaked a little bit, but it wasn't really that bad. I didn't. I didn't feel like I wasted two hours of my life watching yeah. it, but uh, I could have. Um, but it could have been better. That's what I'm saying. It could have been better, but it wasn't terrible. It wasn't a terrible movie. So that's uh, another one on my list. And the last one on my list is uh, Phineas and Ferb: Candace Against the Universe, which was a direct to Disney Plus movie that came out last year. Um, I love Phineas and Ferb. I love the series. I think it was a, an amazing series. I still think it's a great series. It's It boggles my mind how it's still popular with kids, even though the show has long been, you know, canceled. And then them announcing this new, brand new uh, movie on Disney Plus and them having to work really hard to get it out because they had to work through most of the pandemic to finish it. I really loved it. I thought it was great. Was it better than some of the, the other movies that they'd done i kind of like across the second dimension a little bit better it was a little bit more epic a little funnier but all in all it was a great movie it was a great movie and i enjoyed it all right well again i haven't gotten around to seeing that yet that's all right don't worry about it that i do want to to try all right so for you you have one other movie on here um i'm gonna let it slide because it came out in 2019 um, but, uh, I'll let it slide oh, wait, wait, because wait, wait. I kind of want to talk about it <laughs> anyways. Okay, right, yeah. <laughs> um, and that is, uh, you have Claws, uh, on your, uh, or Klaus, sorry, Klaus. Yeah. Cla- yeah. So uh, talk about it real quick before I talk about it. Cause I really want to talk about it. Go ahead. Okay. Um, basically I, I marked it down, uh, not because it came out that, um, obviously it didn't come out in 2020, it came out the year before. Mm. Uh, but it was a movie that I had been meaning to get around to, but hadn't. Um, and now that I've had to, again, I'm not finished with the movie yet, but the part that really kind of, I mean, the story is pretty good, um, but what really gets my attention is the, the art style. I mean, just the way the characters move, I mean, and I, I, can't, I can't describe it, but it, it just the art style really kind of, uh, it really makes the movie stand out, and it doesn't look like anything that's been done before. Oh, mm-hmm. And of course, uh, to Rocket Ship Twenty Six. Hello, <laughs> welcome. Hello, 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 Ro- Roxanne. What's up? How are you? <laughs> so yeah, I I've loved the movie. I saw it uh, over Christmas. It was just. It's probably my most favorite uh, Christmas movie of all time. Like it beat out all the classics um, wow. because the story is great. The characters are great. The art is phenomenal. It has a great message. All of this stuff is just makes it perfect. I saw it not all, not once, but twice <laughs> um, wow. of this Christmas because I just I loved it that much. Bravo to the people who worked on this film. And believe it or not, again for those of you who have never seen our show before, both Danny and I worked at a place called Disney Quest back in the day and one of our fellow pop tarts uh actually worked on that film in the lighting department so so yeah i'm very proud of that film such a good story i didn't even know what it was really about i thought it maybe could be about santa claus but i didn't what we what we saw what i saw was just great and uh awesome all right let's move on to video games Vigi games. Let's move on to Vigi games. I will say that this year, and of course because of everything that happened, it wasn't a huge year for Vigi games. There are some standout ones. Um, I'm going to start off with one that's on both of our lists. And again, this might be a little divisive with the chat. 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, that is, of course, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I really liked Super Mario 3D All-Stars. What was the first game you played when you got it? Uh, Mario 64. Oh, really? Believe it or not, I jumped on to Mario Galaxy. Like, that was the game I wanted to play through again. I love Mario Galaxy. Uh, so much do I love Mario Galaxy. And uh, I had to jump on that game first. And then I played through, uh, well, not all the way through yet, but I've played through most of uh, Sunshine. Because I've never actually beaten Sunshine. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, don't worry if you're still stuck. Because, again, some of those obstacle courses. Oh, my gosh. Um, they're, they're so really hard. Gonna, they are really going to try your patience. It's really, like, probably the one of the hardest 3D Mario games I've ever played. But uh, I love the compilation. I love that it has the soundtracks for all three games. Oh, yeah. I, I, if, it can, if I could nitpick... The only thing I wish it would have is Galaxy 2, because Galaxy 2 is an amazing game, uh, probably even surpassing the first, um, which which is a tall order. You know, I, I, I love the collection, and but there are some people out there that are not so fond of it. The fact that it's only a limited, uh, it's only limited time game, too, is, is also something that not a lot of people like so but i thought it was a great game it was definitely a, a game that i enjoyed coming home to every uh, you know playing it when it came out so all right the next game on my list is star wars squadrons real quickly without going into too much history i love star wars fi- uh flight sim games like rogue squadron um, back in the day, well, I never played TIE Fighter or X-Wing back in the day. I never had a computer that was able to run it. But I did play Rogue Squadron for the N64 and for uh, Rogue Leader for the GameCube. What was the other one I played uh, that I really liked? Uh, I can't remember. Anyways, Squadrons was a game that kind of threw me back to that time. It's a very simple story. Nothing too crazy. Although, it does introduce uh, one of my new favorite uh, capital ships in Star Wars, uh, the Republic Starhawks, which are awesome oh, ships. Never heard of those. Yes, the Starhawks were actually introduced in the books. And oh. uh, so now we're finally seeing them in some type of live action. So that's so basically the Republic... Um, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. The Republic took um, all the decommissioned Star Destroyers and rebuilt them as brand new ships. Their claim to fame is that they're capital ships that have a hugely strong tractor beam that literally could pull a uh, Star Destroyer all by itself towards it. It's a hugely... Hmm? What was the the ship called? It's called Starhawk. Starhawk. It's called the Republic Starhawk. So yeah, so in case you're wondering, Arcaders, I am just basically uh, doing a little... uh... (laughs) Gonna see if I can try and provide some visual aids as uh, my good buddy Socket. Yeah, so it's a great game. It's uh, yeah, there it is. There's the Starhawk. Yeah, that's the ship. It's awesome, and it's made out of decommissioned Star Destroyers, which I thought is a nice little ah. touch. Starhawks are really cool, and this game introduced it. The story was pretty pretty okay. I I wasn't wowed by it, but it was all right. Uh, flying the ships was really cool. It apparently has a really big competitive scene now. Um, although I will, I'm a, I'm a little bit sad because I got rid of the game, and oh. like a few days after I got rid of it, uh, I traded it back into GameStop. Uh, they announced that they were adding B wings and the Tie Defenders oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> into the game, which is fine because it's it's only for multiplayer anyways, and I don't play multiplayer. So, yeah. um, but if you want if you want to see me actually play the game, uh, forgive me for doing a, a small plug. But uh, you can go to twitch.tv slash uh, ubernerd527. I actually played through uh, Star Wars Squadrons. Now, the actual streams are not on there anymore uh, because, unfortunately, my streams, the videos only stay on for a week and then they get deleted. But there are some highlight videos still on there, so you can go on and watch the highlight videos uh, of me playing Squadrons. It's a really good game. It's a really fun game. I enjoyed it. Next is my game of the year. This is my game of the year. Ready for this? Are you ready? I'm. I bet, Danny. Uh, Danny, I'm sure you probably already know the game I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, I will. I will caveat this. Caveat. I have not actually beaten the game yet, and again, that's because I'm currently playing it on my 
stream on Twitch. I my game of the year this year is Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity for the Nintendo Switch. Wow, that game is awesome. I was a big fan of Hyrule Warriors um, when it came out for the 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 Wii U, and then the Definitive Edition came out for the Switch. Age of Calamity takes that takes that game and times it by a hundred man it's it's really good and the story is all right i haven't finished it yet um but it does fill some holes for breath of the wild so yeah that is my game of the year this year is age of calamity really great game i really like warriors games but they have to kind of mean something to me (laughs) putting it with zelda it it really grabs the hold of my attention and having yeah. all the different characters uh, to unlock. Luckily, I've not gotten uh, spoiled on which characters are unlockable yet. I mean, obviously, there's there's the, the the Guardians, Link, Zelda. But there's a few others that I've unlocked. I won't spoil it here. Um, and then some other ones. So, But if you want to watch me actually play it, though, um, come, uh, come over to my stream on Sunday nights uh, at 7, 7 p.m. Uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, and I'll be playing through Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. You can see me actually try to beat the game, which I haven't done yet. <laughs> um, and then lastly is uh, a game that I-, I will have to admit, this game got me through the first half of the quarantine. I don't, I, I-, I think that this really helped me out during that time. And that was, of course, <laughs> Animal Crossing New Horizons. To be fair... After the first few, after getting through the quarantine, I kind of dropped my interest in it and lost it. During the quarantine, it was a great, relaxing game to just enjoy and relax and build up my my island. And it's it's a really great Animal Crossing game. Um, unfortunately, Animal Crossing doesn't really keep my attention for very long. But the initial release. I don't know how, but it was just perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. Because the entire world was playing this game. <laughs> yeah, you know, and here's the thing, you know, I mean, people, I've heard stories of people who had been depressed, but playing Animal Crossing actually helped them get through their, you know, their, de- their, you know, what they were, what they were going through. So it, again, it was therapeutic for them. And, yeah. um, and you're right. It definitely, it's one of those things where it's not, a, because it's not a typical like action or adventure game. Um, it definitely allows you to kind of wind down a bit, but also kind of keep focus on, on, on what you have to do. Yeah, and, and be creative. Give, yeah, be creative. Um, mm-hmm. Heck, I mean, it, it's only just, in my case, you know, I, I, I do play it every now and again. Not as much, but I but I do. And I, I just recently, um, and actually, I think I, uh, I don't think I mentioned this, but um, I pretty much switched up, I traded up from a tent to finally getting around to getting a house. Congratulations! Um, yeah, and I wanted to visit you. Oh. And then you told me, you know, that, oh, yeah, you don't have it anymore. Yeah, so said, oh, sorry, man. dude. Yeah. yeah no, no, it's okay. After the quarantine, um, after the quarantine ended, um, I, I literally lost interest in it, and I really want an Age of Calamity. <laughs> well, you know, I can't blame you. And, and it's definitely one of those games that I, I have to get. Um, yeah. Again, I haven't, I, again, just other things have come up, but, right. but yeah, it's, um, but again, thanks a lot for, uh, for like really um, giving a shout out to uh, Age of Calamity because I admit I myself had been had been on the fence about whether or not to get it, mm-hmm. but hearing everything that you said and uh, and what have you, I really am like okay, I'm sold. I'm if you have never played a, a Warriors game ever, even if you haven't played the original Hyrule Warriors, if you have never played a, a Warriors game, I really yeah. feel that if you've played Breath of the Wild, you will love this game. Unless you're not a big war, unless you don't like Warriors type games. However, if you've always wanted to try Warriors games, I don't feel like you have to jump back to uh, <laughs> to the original one uh, to get it. You can jump right into this one and you'll be fine. So I, I, I highly suggest. All right. You've got two on your list. So first one is uh, Streets of Rage 4. I've heard about this game. Yes. Um, now, basically, um, even though I am a big Nintendo uh, guy, always have been, um, I do have to say, back in the day, um, the gen- there were definitely a lot of good games on the Genesis that really had my attention, and I admit they were really guilty pleasures for me at the time. 
But again, nowadays, that's not the case anymore because now Sega and Nintendo, you know, they do work together at times. They're tight. Streets of Rage was definitely one of those uh, really good side-scrolling beat-em-up games. And the fact that after so many years, they finally got around to doing a fourth installment was really, really, uh, it was really good. And as you, again, I've actually shared some screenshots um, uh, on, on my Twitter and on my Facebook. And uh, it basically, again, it has the same gameplay mechanics that uh, that most diehard Streets of Rage fans recognize. But now, but it's done, but the the art style has very much a comic book uh, style, but yet it, it still fits in with the with the grittiness and just uh, with just the aesthetic of what the game is. Um, clearly, you have your the main characters from the original games are a little bit older, uh, a little bit more scruffier, especially in the case of uh, Axel, uh, because now he's got a full beard. Um, I, I when I first saw that design and also. Um, given that I'm also watching a certain show that's now on Netflix, uh, used to be on YouTube Premium. Um, I always oh, think, yes. You know, I, I, too, I am watching that, said um, show. Zapka, <laughs> um, he, he, could, he probably could play an older version of... Oh, oh, wait, hold on a second. My, uh, my Apple Watch seems to think that I was talking to it. Oh, uh, Siri. Yeah, I do nominate, but again, I always figured if they were to do a Streets of Rage 4 or a live-action Streets of Rage... Uh, but one that takes place like after the games, I figure that William Zapka could play Axel because he has that look. Plus, um, you know, in the first, both the first season of uh, of Cobra Kai and then the first episode of um, of this new season that just came out. Don't spoil anything. Much, I'm not there yet. <laughs> okay. Well, but, but long story short, he pretty much has a bit of a of a, of a beard going, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I, I could definitely see him playing Axel. Mm-hmm. But it's a good game. I haven't finished it yet. The game is hard. Mm-hmm. So do not expect to go through it in one uh, one sitting. Um, expect to die quite a bit before you start to get good at it. But it's a really good game. It stays true to the original three. And again, definitely a must-have if you're a Switch owner, especially um, if you were a fan of the Genesis back in the day. Okay. Next you have this game I want to hear about. I've been very curious about this game. Ring Fit Adventure. Yes. Now, with Ring Fit Adventure, um, it's basically a continuation of, uh, of those uh, sports video games that Nintendo has come up with uh, since uh, going all the way back to back to 2006 with the Wii and Wii Sports. Um, I haven't played it in a while, mainly because I kind of overdid it on one of the exercises, um, oh. but I do want to get back to it. But again, that's on me, so again, folks, if you have Ring Fit Adventure, uh, again, enjoy the exercises, but just like any other kind of exercise, don't overdo it. Right. Um, so, uh, but yeah, you definitely, um, it, it is pretty much a exercise game. You, and, and the cool thing too is that with this one, you really, it's one of those things where it could definitely make a good substitute on days in which you don't feel like going to the gym. Because you have this uh, sort of like ring band, and actually come to think of it, um, I do have it. Uh, so I'm just... So by the way, yeah. congratulations on finding one because for a while nobody could find that game. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, no question about it. I mean, good grief. I mean, now now they're a little bit more in stock, so they're a little bit more easier to come by. Yes, um, yes. But they definitely are. It's definitely a, a cool game. And again, I'm not. I, I'm sorry if the lighting's kind of off. It's out. But, but basically, um, as you can see from the box, um, uh, there's a ring uh, that you can fit your Joy-Con controllers onto. And then it just has you do different exercises. Now, there's there's um, several different modes that you can do with it. Um, one mode is basically just exercise mode, um, as, you, as you can imagine. And then there's, of course, the um, adventure mode in which you do the exercises to move your character through. And it all, it's, a, it's a fun little game and definitely one that, especially if you haven't worked out in a while. Um, and I know that in my case, um, because even before I got the game, I had um, I had gotten... Um, I guess you call it biceps tendonitis. I mean, I, long story short, I overdid it um, mm-hmm. with the weights, and um, and so I was busy, so I couldn't go to the gym. And the fact that also this was right around the same time as quarantine, or I think just before, that also didn't help. So that was kind of a tough thing. But um, but at least um, doing the the ring fit adventure really helped. And the first time through, let's just say I was. I was about ready to sweat buckets uh, because it, cause some of these exercises, again, you can customize the difficulty however you want, which is really good. Um, but it, it's really a lot of fun, and I definitely want to get back to it as soon as I can. Um, but it's, again, it's a fun little exercise game. And if you don't feel like going to the gym, or if you don't have a gym membership but want to do some exercises that are fun, this could definitely be a game up your alley. Cool. Um, so, again, 
definitely recommend. Um, you know, and you don't have to be an exercise guru to have fun with it. Good. All right. Um, we're going to jump right into, because we're running out of time now, yeah. uh, but we're going to jump right into a few things that we're looking forward to in 2021. Okay. Um, so we're going to go over the same topics, just what we're looking forward to. Again, chat, if you're watching this and you want to uh, add into the conversation, maybe with something that you're looking forward to, uh, feel free to do so as we go on. So um, let's start off with movies. Um, I'll start off with a couple that we have in common. Black Widow, uh, which was supposed to come out last year. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things were supposed to, uh, be released, but... Yeah. Oh, well. So, I'm excited for Black Widow. I, I really, like, the whole reason I really wanted to go see Black Widow in the first place was because, uh, I wanted to see where the MCU was going. So, we're gonna find out, uh, hopefully, yep. soon. We will. Oh, we will. Uh, <laughs> all right. Next is Raya and the Last Dragon. That's on both of our lists. Yep. Um, I it's beautiful looking. Um, it really yeah, is. I mean, it, it's definitely another distinct animated film. Right. Like it doesn't feel like it's a carbon copy of anything. Right. And, and so so that right there makes it okay. Definitely a must. And the fact that you have uh, Kelly Marie Tran on there, uh, like doing a part, that's that's pretty cool too. Yeah. Um, I know some people have given her character flack for. But, but you know what? No, no, no. Look, she's a good actress. Yeah. I, and, I'm, and I'm curious to see what she's going to do because she's, really, she's she's got some chops. Yeah. Um, another one on our list, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Again, another movie is supposed to come out last year. Um, kind of excited for it, actually. I'm, I'm really... Uh, I, I saw the trailer when it was released um, and I thought, yeah, uh, I'm in for it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, so uh, definitely another one that's... Uh, on both of our lists, because it stars uh, a one uh, Peter Parker, uh, aka Tom Holland, um, and that of course would be Uncharted. Yes, Uncharted the movie, based off of the awesome video game. When they announced that Tom Holland was playing um, uh, Nathan Drake, I wasn't really too excited about that because I'm like, really, he doesn't really look like Nathan Drake. But then, then. Mr. Tom Holland decided to tweet himself uh, a picture of him in costume as Nathan Drake, and I went, all right, <laughs> sold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, again, um, I actually am, uh, I'm actually curious as to what he's going to do, because I've actually seen, I mean, granted, I haven't, wasn't able to see, but I did see um, clips as well as the trailer for some of the other stuff he's been working on. Uh, like, for example, Netflix's uh, The Devil You Know, mm -hmm. uh, which is very much an intense thriller type thing. Um, that film, along with the uh, another one he's doing um, with the Russo brothers uh, called, I think it's Cherry? Cherry, I think it's called. And so, but yeah, it's, it, it's a new movie. And again, the thing is, um, now it's easy to look at Tom Holland and think, well, he looks too young and things like that. And there's no way he, he has too much of a boyish face. Yeah. But... The performance that he did in uh, The Devil You Know, he really shows that, yeah, he can he can really be, he can deliver different kinds of performances. Um, and he, um, so, and again, and if they're starting, and if this Uncharted film is basically Nathan Drake year one, like if this is him when he's just starting out, then, and then okay, then, then, then it's all the more reason to, uh, to cast a younger guy, because then you can kind of get to see his progression and how he becomes... The that's a good point. That we all know. That, that's a good point. And, and also, um, I'm, I'm going to throw in another thing. I can't, I'm trying to remember his name. Um, but the guy who played Nathan Drake in all the games, um, he's yeah, a really, Nolan North. Nolan North, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was actually on set with Tom yeah. Holland um, yeah. and actually was kind of teaching him, you know, what, what Nathan would do. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> Hey, I mean, I'm look, hopefully I mean, optimistic. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's be hopeful. I mean, look, I mean, I mean, as long as they got a good director there, I mean, it's it's it'll be good. And yeah. plus, again, I mean, we know. I mean, I know now what Tom Holland can do, and believe you me, he can do a lot more than just play Spider Man. Yeah. Um, he he definitely has the chops. So, um, I think. I mean, honestly, there's there doesn't seem to be a whole lot he can't do. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And again, if if Nolan North, in his own way, kind of gave his own stamp of approval, then I think um, it's in good hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all on both of our lists. In fact, that's all on your lists. 
Uh, the only extra one I have is Jungle Cruise, starring one Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> um, I really liked the trailer for it, and I was sad that they had to push that back. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see this movie. Again, a very Indiana Jones-esque movie, and uh, I'm excited to see it. Uh, any yeah, any I mean, any thoughts about it? Well, um, at first I really didn't know what to make of it. I'm actually looking it up right now, just because, uh, you know, just to give uh, the audience some uh, visual aids and such. Some visual uh, but, aids. Uh, yep. Because again, just uh, yeah. But um, but I'd say knowing Dwayne Johnson, he always any role he does, you know, it's going to be something fun and something really just really good. So uh, to me, I'm actually gonna keep an open mind and check it out. I mean, I, I mean, again, yeah, I don't know what to expect, but maybe I mean, that's the, maybe that's the point, you know? Like, because, but again, anything that Dwayne does, you know, you're gonna, you, you're at least going to have some degree of fun with it. I mean, I mean, we thought the same way about pirates, and uh, look how that turned yeah. out. Yeah, um, <laughs> so, all right, let's move on to shows. Um, and of course, the first first show is on both both of our lists. <laughs> the one show we are waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> when, the one show that they teased at the end of The Mandalorian, and of course, Book of Boba Fett. I'm excited, um, especially after uh, uh, the tragedy and seeing Boba Fett in action, and also learning that um, uh, the, it's also going to be produced by not only John Favreau and Dave Filoni, but also Robert Rodriguez, who directed the tragedy man i'm so excited for this show <laughs> yeah. i mean i think seeing a boba fett show is is something that a lot of fans have been looking forward to now i wasn't exactly um i'm not a hardcore boba fett fan even mm-hmm. though i do like the character mm-hmm. but um just uh, but again just everything that we've seen of him and i know that uh, the origins of the mandalorian tv show spawned from an idea of supposedly there being a boba fett um, spin off 1313 um, now, yeah yep and but the fact that we're now <laughs> finally getting a chance to see it is something that i'm looking forward to the most yeah. because i have to admit um when i first heard about boba fett you know it was through the classic trilogy um namely the re-releases back in 97 but um but i have to say i wasn't really i didn't know what to make of the character i know there was like a mystique about him that he was probably that oh i liked him i thought it was best, cool i had to have his all, all his action figures <laughs> Yeah. So, but again, thanks to the Mandalorian TV show, we pretty much get we pretty much got the, the Boba Fett that everyone thought they had seen, or, yeah. or at least that they had heard about. Oh yeah. Oh, and again, yeah. and credit to the actor uh, Tamora Morrison. Oh yes, yes, he, yes, yes. He really delivered it. He, he did. And, and he also showed uh, that even without the armor, he can still kick your butt. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. And I love that they threw in parts of not only Boba but also Jango. Because you, you, there's that one part where he twirls the gun just like just like Django does in episode yep. two. Yeah, that, oh, that was killer. Anyways, yes, Book of Boba Fett, awesome. Next, and uh, before we say, before I say who, what this is, um, we are probably, maybe, don't know because every time I say that we're gonna do an episode here on our podcast, it has been <laughs> either we don't do it or it doesn't come out for years. So I won't say that we're going to do this right now, but um. I think we're definitely going to do a podcast about this show. Um, and I'm thinking it might even be a two part episode. Uh, maybe like first part being like the first episode and then maybe like after the season's done. But of course that would be one division, which is coming out very, very soon. Yep. I'm very excited to finally see some more MCU stuff. I've, I've been missing the MCU. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know what? I think in a way the 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 gap, the one year gap that we had, kind of works both in yeah. in real both in real life and also in universe because in a way it allows the audience a chance to really digest everything. Yeah, and wonder and really go, well, when is the next era going to begin? Yeah, well, it's going to start now, and especially with the announcements they gave during that um during that whole uh, investor thing. Holy smoke! Yeah, we're we gonna get a no lot. Idea what we're in for. <laughs> so I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna be, and I've said this before on previous podcasts. I think it's gonna be good, but I think it's gonna be a little trippy. 
But, you know, when you're dealing with a multiverse, uh, it's always going to be a little trippy. So, uh, can't wait for that. We're definitely going to be talking about that uh, very soon. So, next is, of course, another Marvel uh, TV series, and that's Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think between the two Marvel shows, I think I'm excited more for Falcon and Winter Soldier than I am for WandaVision. Um, although I am I'm definitely going to go see it. I think I'm more excited about this because I'm excited to see what happens after Falcon gets the shield and what he yeah. does with the shield and the responsibilities of kind of being the next Captain America. And then, of course, not only that, but also running around with with uh, Bucky is yeah. going to be quite an interesting... I feel it's going to be quite an interesting ride. I don't know who the villain's going to be, though. Uh, have you heard anything about that there, Danny? Well, I know the actor who played um, Zemo he is going to be making an appearance. Yes. So that much, that much I do know. But other than that, I don't know. Okay. And, and and I do, and again, like you said, I do like the idea of it dealing with of Sam now dealing with the fact that okay, uh, Steve gave you the he gave you the shield, so so to speak, he gave he passed the mantle to you. So what are you going to do? And it's kind of a little bit like, all right, well, are you going to step up or or not? And and so it's 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 definitely something. Um, again, it, obviously we're dealing with a whole new era of the MCU again post End Game. So, and I think in the grand scheme of things, that I think that's what Phase Four is really going to be dealing with. Uh, just you know, you have these new generation of heroes in a way having to step up and in a way take up the torch now. Uh, you know, because uh, so it's it's going to be interesting to see how they do it. But for me, you know what, I'm ta- I'm going to take it all in. Yeah. Um, honestly, yes, I'm looking forward more towards uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. But you know mm-hmm. what, I I'm really um, I'm curious, and I'm really going to try and ch- I'm really going to make it a point to check out Wandavision um, definitely as much as possible. Yeah, because uh, I I think there's again there's a lot of the potential there, and mm-hmm. I think supposedly the character Wanda is going to be making an appearance in the next Doctor Strange movie. So yes. obviously, I think some of this stuff is going to tie into that, and I'm sure it's um, also going to tie into Loki as well because the, from yeah. the trailer, from what we saw of that trailer, um, I think it's all going to tie in as well. But we'll we'll, we'll see. But yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely I'm excited for Marvel. I'm excited for yep. finally getting some Marvel stuff. Um, yep. <laughs> all right, next two are Star Wars related. Uh, first of all, the uh, uh, well, we already did Book of Boba Fett, but uh, Star Wars Bad Batch. I'm excited for it. I know some people are not as excited. Danny, are you excited? Actually, yeah. I mean, I have to admit, um, the Bad Batch didn't—they didn't really connect with me at first. But I have to say, looking at looking at it again, they really are quite the motley crew, and in a really good way. And what I like about this new series is that it's going to really showcase. Okay, what does this batch of clones do once Order sixty six goes down? And another thing that I'm also curious about too is. Did this bad batch, were they even given the biochip? Because I know that there's that whole story that basically pretty much all the clones are given that biochip. Mm-hmm. Uh, which again, which what again, if Order 66 um, goes off, then they have no choice but to obey it. Right. Um, unless, of course, if because they are the bad batch, something happened and they said, okay, you know what, hold on a second, let's get this thing out. You know, let's get that, that, uh, that chip out. You know, so, but again, the idea of them uh, kind of going around and having their own little misadventures um it's going to be very interesting to see what they do and the fact that they had that uh the character fennec shan i think I, did I yeah say her name right? yep i, I apologize mm-hmm. if i didn't say her no. name right you said it um yeah so uh, the fact that fennec shan will be in there so uh because i know me now when had uh tweeted about that mm-hmm. so that right there says okay yeah so it, it's going to be a very it's going to be quite the interesting thing i mean it almost and maybe this is probably not the best comparison, but do you think it's almost kind of like the 18th, even though, even um, though the Bad Batch have not been accused of a crime they didn't commit? But, yeah, you know. um, I think so. I think it's probably going to... I think you, you, you might have hit on the head. But what I'm most excited about is... I'm most excited about to see what happened to the clones after the Clone Wars. You know, they have, yeah. they have, they have worn out their usefulness now. You know, yeah. Palpatine used them. Now what happens to them? I'm interested to see where that story leads and uh, seeing where these characters go. And of course, we got Echo, um, who is oh, yeah. one of the very few survivors. 
uh, from the group of clones that we started off with at the very beginning. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, hey, I mean, look, I mean, honestly, I, I like to think that at least some of those clones were able to have some degree of normalcy right. for a little bit. I mean, we know, we know Rex did. Or yeah. at least I'd like to think that after... Because we know he was in Return of the Jedi. That's been yes. retconned. But yeah, the, the, the Santa Claus guy was uh, was Rex. <laughs> so. Finally, we have Star Wars Visions. I'm excited for this. I've, I've been a fan of anime. Yep. And uh, the fact that they're getting the, the top-rated anime studios to do their own version of Star Wars... Uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in this, I'm in this, man. This is gonna be good. Yeah, um, and you know, it's, it's something that even I'm really curious to, because I've always felt that Star Wars really lends itself to an anime sensibility, mm. and it even reminds me of that, uh, that animated, uh, DVD that they, that, uh, that Warner Brothers, uh, oh, excuse me, and DC Entertainment had done years back. And I think it was right around uh, the time when Batman Begins came out. It was called Batman Garth- Gotham Knight. That was uh, that was Dark Knight, not not Begin. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I stand corrected. No, uh, but yeah, right around that time, there was that uh, Batman Gotham Knight, which was basically pretty much you know just um, I don't know if those stories were interconnected, but they were they were uh, no, stories. That they were, were just done. separate ones. They're, yeah, yeah. So separate stories done by very different um, anime uh, directors and. Boy, it, it really kind of showed what these characters could be if given the, the anime uh, aesthetic. Yeah. And I know that Star Wars, just by nature, again, especially given what uh, what, is, what some of the things it's inspired by, it, it, it fits. Yeah. It fits. It's not even a question. So, Because I, I personally, I've always been curious to see, like, okay, how would uh, some of these characters look like with the anime uh, right. paintbrush? Uh, of course, so my... I'm looking forward to that. My first, my first reaction was Animatrix, uh, which came out before Gotham Knights, uh, which was the essentially the same thing. Um, so this will, this will, this is going to be very interesting because I feel like Disney has kind of strayed away from anime for a very long time. Um, even though I, I, I kind of see Big Hero Six as kind of their attempt to do like an anime kind of thing, like a kind of shout out to anime. But uh, yeah, Star Wars Visions, I'm I'm excited for it, and then. Who knows? We might have a whole bunch more shows that are coming out this year that we haven't even listed yet. So um, I know there's a bunch of animated shows, although unfortunately um, I'm not sure exactly which ones are coming out and which one this year or which ones aren't. Um, I don't know if any's been pushed back. Um, so we'll have to see on that. Uh, all right, let's move on to video video games. Let's move on to the video games. Let's see. Uh, the first one we have on both of our lists is uh, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, um, which, oh yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, a lot. I mean, just, I mean, come on, I mean, I, as somebody who had uh, gotten the GameCube version of uh, le- of the first Lego Star Wars, and uh, and then later for the for the Wii, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, um, and for the Wii U, I had gotten uh, Lego Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens, so yeah, um, and just again, the Lego, because... For me, I mean, I do have um, Lego Star Wars stuff, but it was the original X-Wing. But since I only have so much room, at least with this ga- with this game, I can pretty much say yes. I have, I've got my Lego Star Wars models. Yes, it's in the video game, but that's how I prefer it. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, it's it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, the only other named game that we have on here on both of our lists is a game I don't think I'm going to get right away. I think this might take a while before I get it. Uh, but Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So I talked about this uh, way back in our PlayStation Memories podcast. So if you want to get more info about it, um, but I, I've said it, I've said it over and over again throughout several different podcasts, and I'm going to say it again: I love the Ratchet and Clank games. I cannot wait for Rift Apart. It looks like it's going to be a great game. The problem is, it's gonna it's on a brand new game system that costs a lot of money. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to wait. <laughs> but it looks like it's gonna be a great game. I really am excited for it. Um, to play it would be really cool. The last thing we have here on our lists, um, and I'm just gonna kind of clump them all together. Um, and we all have to go through this real quick because we're, we're running out of time. So whatever they announced this year, 
we really don't know what they're going out with this year except for the few games we just mentioned. Uh, honestly, I mean, look, whatever they come, whatever comes out, I'm good. Um, if anything, um, the slight low in a lot of ways kind of gives me an opportunity to, um, to just continue to catch up on my games that, uh, that I've yet to play. Um, plus, I know that, even though, granted, the pandemic may have shut down a lot of things, but one thing I've noticed, and, you're, and I know you know this too, and yes, uh, that is my... Uh, Look at that! Yep, I still have to get another Look stack. Look at that uh, but giant again, these stack. Things do stack. And again, if you have not gotten these arcades, you are, I, I recommend that you do. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> uh, but for me, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Because at least when it comes to like video game development and uh, for animation, like voiceover, it turns out that they have not really been affected all that much by, by the pandemic, but given the nature that, oh yeah, with voiceover, people can pretty much record from their home studios. Um, and of course, same thing with, uh, with video game development, yeah. you know, I mean, as long as you have the development kit, you're pretty much like, okay, you do that and yeah. you should communicate with, uh, with your folks via Zoom or, yeah. or whatever, or, or whatever. Do people even use Skype these days? I don't know. There's, <laughs> there's yeah, a lot I'm, of I'm, things flying around. There's a lot of rumors flying around. Um, you know, rumors about a, a Zelda, uh, anniversary collection and, a pro switch and, Remakes of uh, Diamond and Pearl, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and th there's a whole bunch of rumors going on, but we don't have anything um, cemented. I don't know when we'll actually hear anything. Uh, with our luck, it'll <laughs> it'll be right after we're done recording this. <laughs> Which is usually the case. It's usually the it's, case. It's, 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 it's almost kind of like any ideas that you and I come up with. Yeah. We don't think of them at the time, but as soon right. as the recording is over, boom. It's like, oh my gosh, ugh. Why, why, did the, why did it pop up while we were, while we were talking, you know? I mean, right. But it's, it's okay, though. And I just want to bring this up real quick, and then we're going to start ending the podcast here. Um, as of course, Super Nintendo World. Now, I'm not going to actually be able to visit uh, Super Nintendo World, <laughs> even though, dang, I want to go so bad. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. You and me both, man. Just going to have to wait till it comes to, to Orlando, but wow. Just wow. I don't want to go over it too much here because we are we're trying to build up a podcast about it that we're going to probably bring out sometime next month. Maybe again, who knows? So I don't want to talk about it too much here, but it's so it's 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 really cool, and I'm excited um, to hear all the fun things that come out of it. So, uh, what about you, Danny? Uh, yeah, no spoilers here, but all I can say is from the video that they put out. I think we're going to be in for a real treat. Yeah. Um, of course, how much of that is going to be, how much of that's going to carry over when they start doing the one over here on this side of the Pacific, I don't know. But it, as, but the moment, uh, but I, I'll tell you this much, um, the more the moment that announcements are coming that oh yeah they're building one here and and then uh, you know and, you know all the the leading up to the, the grand opening, I definitely am hoping. I don't know if I'll be able to, but I will make it a point to try and get a ticket for that day one because that yeah. is something that I had always wanted to see. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, I know a lot of people have wanted to have that sort of thing. The idea of being able to finally have one um, is something that, uh, again, it's, it's, it's every 80s kid's dream. And, <laughs> and, and it's one that I'm looking forward to. And hey, um, I know that when my niece uh, is uh, old enough, I'll definitely be able to take her. If, in fact, that right there is a reason for uh, for an annual pass, you know, for, just to, to be able to take her and, uh, and and to really show her, hey, look, this is uh, this is the Nintendo stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Again, no spoilers from me, arcaders. So if you're curious, just go on YouTube and look up Nintendo's uh, Super Nintendo World video. Cool. All right, then let's start wrapping up here. Uh, it's been a real blast. Uh, talking with you guys uh, on the stream here. So I hope you guys had fun. Um, Danny, I had fun with you as always, my friend. Um, so nice once time. again, thank you for joining us here for the Electric Circus podcast. Um, and again, we are part of the arcadearchives.com. Again, that's the arcadearchives.com, which, by the way, we just got a brand new site redesign courtesy of our founder, uh, Mr. Ray Gunn. Looks beautiful. I am very happy with the redesign. So great, great job there, Ray. If you're listening to this, and holy spamoli, yep. Yeah, oh look how beautiful gosh. that looks. Uh, oh. For those of you who are are watching it live, uh, look how pretty oh that looks. Oh my gosh! 
gosh. Yeah. No words. No but words. In a really good way. Oh my gosh. So uh, we are really, really happy you guys joined us. If you want to go uh, more, you see in the site right on the screen now. For those of you watching live, for those of you not watching live, go to thearcadearchives.com. Check out our articles, our videos, our, our web comics, our and of course our podcasts. You can also now go on uh, YouTube and find us on YouTube. Uh, we have several of the uh, Electric Circus episodes now up on YouTube, as well as Spotify and yes. Anchor now. We are part of Anchor wow. and Spotify, so you can listen to our podcasts, our past podcasts on there. Um, if you get a chance, go listen to our last podcast, uh, episode 20, where we were ta- where I talked with uh, Diana Rex about her uh, her web comic uh, Poem of Light. Uh, and if you haven't seen that comic yet, oh my gosh, please see it. It's great. It's awesome. You should see it. It's great. So, uh, and then of course you can find, uh, us here on Instagram, of course, the Arcade Archives, uh, on Twitter, you can find us at Arcade A Network, and then of course on Facebook, uh, just search the Arcade Archives and you'll find us there. Uh, now let's get into where you can find us personally. If you guys want to, uh, chat up with us, Danny, where can they find you? All right. Well, you can find me on Facebook, um, as well as on Twitter, uh, specifically under the uh, handle at Ultra SNC PLYR9. Um, I'm also on fanfiction.net, where I write some stories on there. And you can also find me on Instagram as well, under the pen name Ultrasonic9. Awesome. So, yeah, so if, you want to, so, if, so if you want to follow me, if you're curious, you know, just go ahead. Cool. And uh, you can also find me on both Twitter and Instagram at ubernerd527. That's U-B-E-R-N-E-R-D-527 on both Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find me on Twitch on Sunday nights for Sunday night streaming, uh, twitch.tv slash ubernerd527. Um, thank you again so much for joining us here for our live podcast recording. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, I had fun. I'm Danny. Did you have fun? Oh yeah, I, I had a blast. Awesome. And, 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 again, as always, it's a pleasure uh, talking to you, and <laughs> you know, hopefully, we'll be able to do more of this because we oh, really yeah. have the momentum going. Definitely. And I really want to keep it going. Yeah, man. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining us here, and don't forget to keep playing like it's 1981. See you guys. All right. See ya. Hey, arcaders. This is Ray Gunn from the Arcade Archives Network. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast that you're listening to. If you're listening on iTunes, please give it five stars. A lot of time and patience go into every podcast we do. Five-star ratings help us so we can continue giving you this quality entertainment every month. And don't forget to share us with your friends. If you're listening to us on YouTube, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And if you're over on our Facebook page, please like and share. Once again, we do this for you guys, and we enjoy doing it every single month. So every little bit helps. So please, go online and like us today. Thanks, keep playing like it's 1981, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now. The Electric Circus is a part of the Arcade Archives Network and is produced by What's This Button Do Productions. Hey guys, what's this button do? Oh, that's what the button does. Oh. The Electric Circus is a part of the Arcade Archives Network.